American Psycho is directed by Mary Heron, and it stars Christian Bale, Jared Leto, Willem Dafoe, and Reese Witherspoon. Welcome back to Hollow Screen. Sorry, my voice probably sounds like crap. I just got back from a concert. Oh, so, as always, this review will contain spoilers to American Psycho. So if you've never seen this film and you want to avoid any and all spoilers, I would highly recommend skipping to this timestamp so you can receive my spoiler-free thoughts. And my final grade on this film. I will also leave a timestamp in the description that you can skip to. This film follows a Wall Street worker, Patrick Bateman, a man who is very narcissistic and disturbed. By definition, Patrick Bateman is a douchebag. He is the lowest form of life on earth. He brutally rapes and murders women. Everything about Patrick Bateman screams psychopath, even down to his morning routine. Just look at this. I love that sound. Wait, wait, wait. Wrong morning routine. But you get the idea. I mean, it's kind of ironic how many YouTube influencers have the obligatory morning routine video just like Patrick Bateman. But I would be lying if I said that Patrick Bateman was not an extremely fascinating character. Christian Bale gives an Oscar-worthy performance here, and there is a reason to why this performance put Christian Bale on the map. It's over the top when it needs to be over the top, and it's even emotionally devastating at times. Patrick Bateman is a character that you love to hate. You understand that he's a psychopath, but deep down there's some quality about him that just keeps you drawn to him, that I guess just keeps your eyes drawn to him. It's like watching a train crash, and you just you can't keep your eyes off it. His performance is so ridiculous and over the top, that it's disturbingly hilarious. Writing a character so sick and evil, but also incredibly fun to watch at the same time is a hell of a task. And also Christian Bell giving an excellent performance is just a double treat overall. Though this film isn't for everyone. If dark humor isn't for you, then this movie just isn't for you. In fact, this film might even appall you. But I happen to find this movie pretty hilarious. Dark humor is always really funny, when it's written well, that is. I think what makes the Patrick Bateman character work so well is that he is just so incredibly vain and self-conscious. The only thing he really cares about in the world is himself, and he focuses so greatly on his self-image but at the same time, he fails to realize how ridiculous his personality is. His performance is also very devastating at times. Towards the end of this movie, you actually feel quite a bit of empathy for him. You don't feel sympathy for him because, well, it's physically impossible to feel sympathy for someone so sick and evil. But you can kind of feel his guilt towards some of the awful things that he has done throughout this movie. Oh, so this film isn't just shocking, you know, just to be shocking. There actually is some depth to be found here. This film is a tale about how conformity can hide evil. This film is a commentary on 80s yuppie culture and how, if you pay attention to uh, Patrick's co-workers, they are so wrapped up in their own ego, in their own world, that they fail to see what is right in front of them. They fail to see that there is an actual psychopath working with them. They fail to see their surroundings because they are so wrapped up in their own world. I mean, these people can't even remember each other's names. The ending to this film is a lot to uh, digest. It's a lot to wrap your head around. This ending opens up the idea that all the murders only took place in Patrick Bateman's head. 
Patrick Bateman is the definition of an unreliable narrator. Like, there are certain details of the murders that are just too over-the-top and too unrealistic, especially during the climax of this film. But the one thing that is fact is that Patrick Bateman is given a fate worse than death. If the murders were real, then he has to live with the guilt and sorrow of all the despicable things that he has done. But if they're fake, then he's destined to live in his head forever and is now unable to tell what is fiction and what is reality. These are the feelings that the audience are left with after this film. This ending just feels so ballsy and ambitious, and I, I love it so much. I've said it time and time again, but when filmmakers leave things up to interpretation, the outcome is always just so, so, so great. Also, there is a great easter egg to the novel, actually. There's a door behind Patrick Bateman in the final shot of this film that says, this is no exit, or this is not an exit. And that is actually a reference to the final line of the novel, this is not an exit. The little image that Patrick Bateman has, uh, put in front of him, this image of luxury has now kind of shattered and he's now forced to confront the real Patrick Bateman, the American Psycho. Overall, American Psycho is a pretty hilarious movie, but under its facade, it has a very twisted message to it that really resonates with me and allows this film to enter masterpiece territory. And because of that, American Psycho gets an A+. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my review of American Psycho. And if you did, make sure to give this video a like. And if you want more content like this, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell notification so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And shout out to Judge Judy and Anthony Hopkins. Thanks for watching.